been on the ladder before? I've never been up here before. This is your first time? This is my first time. Are you feeling a little kind of scared, nervous? No, I'm ready. You're I'm ready. ready, okay. You used to, now you are a brand new Christian, aren't you? I have only, only seven months now. Seven months you've been a Christian, and what did you come from? I came from Shia Islam. Shia Islam. So you used to be a Muslim. I used to be a Muslim. And you now left Islam, and you become a Christian. Why did you leave Islam? I left Islam because it lies about the Lord Jesus Christ. Because yes. it tells nothing but lies, it's nothing but fraud. You can find, you don't know who the Messiah is, what he came to do, why is he the Messiah? But yet, the Jews, whether you take it as scripture or not, the Jews wrote it 400 years before our Lord. Why were the Jews writing prophecies about the crucifixion of Christ? Oh. Why? If he's no one, if it's not supposed to happen, Every bit of evidence, every single thing, okay, hold points on, to let's... our Lord Jesus Christ. Even the Greeks knew it. You are too animated. Sorry. You're knocking off your... This is very important because this is mine, so I want to make sure you get it. My apologies, my good friend. There you go. Don't, don't, you, you, you get excited. Keep getting excited. All right, continue on. So what is it that you liked? You left Islam, Shia Islam, because it was a lie for you. And it didn't tell you about the Jews, and it didn't tell you about the truth. What else was a problem that you found with Islam? That there was a problem with the Quran's own self-proving criteria. Now, there's a common fallacy we know called the affirming the consequent. I'll give you guys a basic example. Wait, 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 wait. That's a big word. Did you understand what he just said? No. Tell I'm say it one more time. Affirming the consequence. Affirming the consequence. What's that mean? Okay. I'm dumb. I have no idea what you're talking I'm about. I'm going to give you the example and show you how it works, okay? And I'm going to show you how it's in the Quran. So first, we have an antecedent and a consequence, a prior statement and a consequence statement. When we say the light is broken, that's the antecedent. Therefore, the room is dark. That's the consequence. Now, this follows A to B. But when we say B is true, it doesn't mean A is true. The room is dark. Therefore, the light is broken doesn't yeah. follow the room could be dark for okay. the reason. You've got to go left to right. I see what you're yeah. saying. Right. Cause and effect. Right. Cause and effect. Now, yeah. the Quran, Surah 4, Ayat 82 says, if this book was from other than Allah, that's the antecedent, then you would find many contradictions in it. That's the consequence. Now, how do you then prove the prior antecedent, the first statement? We have to verify there's no contradictions. The problem is that this argument is a logical fallacy. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's another big word. Hold on a minute. You're, you're, you're giving me a headache with all these big words. I thought you were a brand new Christian and then you're a young man half my age. What do you mean logical fallacy? Logical fallacy is when the thing you're trying to point to or the inference that it points to another thing being true fails. It doesn't follow. It doesn't get you to that thing being true. So Allah's own argument in the Quran, I urge you all, learn affirming the consequence. Surah 4, Ayah 2082. You will see Allah makes a fallacious can argument and well? proves that He can is you, not God. Can I come up as well? Yeah. not from God in any manner because God is not subject to error. God does not make fallacies. God grounds all logic. God causes all things to know logic as our intelligent reason. The soul He breathes into us gives us this ability. Muhammad didn't have it. Maybe he had a soul that lacked. We don't know. Okay, hold on. Do How do you know Muhammad did not have it? You're gonna, you're running really fast here. Slow down. Mm -hmm. Why and where do you get that idea from that he didn't have it? Well, we know the Quran is not from Allah. We all know this. We know the Quran is from this man called Muhammad. So, quote unquote, maybe that's disputable in itself. But what we we'll say is the arguments in the Quran are terrible. The Quran says things like, oh, if you guys are the sons of God, Allah will treat you better or not punish you along those lines. What on earth has got being a father got to do with punishment? Good fathers punish you when you do wrong and, and praise you when you do right. Mama doesn't even know what father-son relationship is. He doesn't have a clue. This is his argument against Christians. Oh, <laughs> God will treat you better because you're sons of God. With a bunk. These things in the Quran are unserious. They're not intelligent. Okay, looking at the history of Islam for the last 1400 years, They've done a pretty lousy job, haven't they? They have indeed. What does that say about their God? He's Nothing. not treating them very well, is he? He's not at all. In fact, we are against Islam. We have nothing to do with Allah, and yet we are successful in everything we touch. Indeed. So what does that say about Allah, the God, versus Yahweh, our God? It tells us who the Lord is, who is our Savior, who is our Redeemer, who is the mighty God of Israel. And it's not Allah, that demon. Okay. It is Yahweh. 
is the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's the only true God. There is no Allah. There is no pagan deity, no ISIS, no nothing. Only Jesus Christ. That's it. Are you all hearing this? This is from a man who's only been a Christian for seven months. He's just coming in to the kingdom of God. Listen, I want to shake your hand. God bless you for coming God home. Is there anything else you want to say before you leave? I want to say, Christos Anesti, the Lord is risen. There you go. Jesus. Let, let him come first and then you're next. Okay, now what are you speaking on? <laughs> on uh, Muhammad. <laughs> on what? Well, I actually, no, first I want to say just hello. Tell me, just tell me first and then we'll go. First, I, I told you about Muhammad. You said, like the, 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 the word, yeah, okay. Okay. So the worst of, the, of the mankind. No. The worst of all the peoples. Okay, of. okay, here we go. Uh, and what's your name? My name is Klaus. I'm from Germany, so excuse my bad English. Oh dear. So we got a German on the ladder with us. Yeah. All right, that's good. We just had D-Day. We're not going to hold it against you. <laughs> Welcome to England. Glad you, you made much. it and you're not on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> now listen, so Klaus, you're a Christian, are you not? Yes, of course. And you've grown up as a Christian. Yes. But you work with Muslims, don't you? Yes. So you know a lot about Islam, don't you? Yeah. You've had a lot of training. You've had a lot of teaching. You've studied not only their holy book, you've also studied their prophet Muhammad. Of course. You know quite a bit about Muhammad, don't you? Yes, of course. And you want to talk about him today. Yes. Because you have a problem with him, don't you? Well, not so much with him. Actually, we, in Germany, we do have a problem with the Muslims. No, let's not talk about the Muslims. I'm yeah, going to talk about Muhammad. We have the problem with the Muslims that why, they will why, not why, defend why, Muhammad. Why? They will run. Oh. We want to challenge the Muslims in Germany to defend their prophet, uh, supposedly. Let's see. But they run. Are there any Muslims here? Have you noticed? All the Muslims have left. The ones that were here have now gone. Why have all the Muslims left? Muslims, will you defend your prophet, prophet Muhammad? Will you say, will you show us that he's a pro, the, like the example for mankind? I can't see Look, any it's, here. It's okay. like in Germany here. We're not going to get any Muslims today. So you have some ideas here that you want to talk about. Go ahead. Yeah, so what, what we actually need to do, like we tried, we tried to speak about whether or not Muhammad is a prophet. Because there's biblical criteria, God gave us 14 criteria in the Bible. What is a prophet? Like being called by God and so on. But Muhammad meets none of those. Hold on, none. hold on, hold on. What's the first criteria? Being called by God. Called by God. Of Which, course, a prophet should be called by God. Okay, well, Muhammad would say he was called by God in the hit of King. No, so how are you going to answer that? That's what, that was not God. Supposedly, it was an angel, but he didn't even say it was a creature that squeezed him. Okay, so the angel was the emissary of God by squeezing him and saying, yeah. recite, isn't that calling by God? But well, it actually didn't even work. He said, Ikra, but he couldn't read. It said, Ikra, couldn't read. You know, the word of God, what God says, it does. When Jesus says, rise to a little girl that is dead. You're starting to preach now. I want yeah. you to stick to this. <laughs> so we're still dealing with, how do you know that Muhammad was not called by God? Because Muslims will say, I'll be a Muslim now, all right? I'll be devil's advocate. Muslims will say, by virtue of Jibril coming down and giving them that test, and then Waraka ibn Nofal actually dictating that he is a prophet. So he is a Nestorian Christian that told Khadija, his wife, that this is a prophet. There's the calling right there. So for a Muslim standpoint, he was called by God. But what do men prophets who call by God, what are the two criteria they must do? Well, to be called by God, you have to preach God's word and receive it first from God, which he never did. He never meets God. He never spoke okay, to God. Okay, let's back up again. You must preach God's word. So that which you preach has to jive, has to parallel with what all the prophets preached. Yes. Okay, of let's look course. at these two books. Of are course. you suggesting to me that these two books contradict each other? Absolutely. Well, definitely. They're full of contradictions, aren't they? It's not my topic, though. It yeah. is your topic. So here we go. Can you see? These are two different books, right? Definitely. So there's the first criteria. What also must prophets do? Well, actually, we do have a lot of biblical criteria. We also have Islamic criteria. 
Muhammad doesn't meet the biblical criteria. Okay, let's go through them real quickly. But also, like, okay, that's very quickly, because I have to, to, to make a suggestion how we can help the Muslims defend Muhammad. So, one is called by God. What is prophesying in the name of the Lord? But you showed before, okay. he didn't do. Okay, the, these people, these people don't know what you're talking about. What's that name we're talking about? That name is Yahweh, so, the name that God spoke to Moses that will be his name forever. And you can't find that. Zero times, zero times. And it's not on his lips, it's not in the hadith. Number two, okay. Strike one, strike two. So, and of course, God's word comes to him. God's word comes to a prophet. It's not just some sound, some ringing bell. God's word, which we see in the Bible, is a person. And which also Muslims should know is a person. He uh -huh. comes to a prophet. You're talking about Jesus, of aren't course. you? Of course. Oh, there's a catchy one. Did Jesus ever appear to Muhammad? Never. Zero. Come on, I wish there was a Muslim here to answer that. Never did Jesus ever appear to Muhammad. But Jesus has to appear to Muhammad, right? So three, strike three, go ahead. Well, prophets prophesy. There is no prophecy in the Quran. Well, sometimes he tried to say something with the Romans, but if you look it up, it's a false prophecy. There is no ro true prophecy in the Quran. In the Bible, there's it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of detailed prophecy I'm, which came true. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you one. Yeah. There is a prophecy that in the Quran or that Muhammad said that in a few years the Byzantines would destroy yeah, the Persians. The Romans, yeah. How much is that? Now, you are from Pakistan, right? Absolutely. You're very well dressed. Thank you, sir. I love the way you have you have your scarf. But I noticed something dandy right here. Oh yeah. You not only have one, but you have two crosses. Absolutely. But you didn't always like the cross, did you? Of course not. There were times when you were against those crosses, were you not? 27 years of my life. 27 years, and how old are you now? now? I'm 33. So you're talking about just six years ago. Yes. Up to six years ago, you did not like Christianity. No. You did not like God. No. You did not like Jesus. No. Well, you did like Jesus. I like Jesus, but the Muslim version of Jesus. You didn't like the biblical version of Jesus. No. You did not like the crucifixion. No. And you certainly did not like Christians today who are down here at Speaker's Corner. Of course not. What then changed? I saw the abuse that people suffered by Muhammad. So when you had those, that much abuse happening by one man all over Arabia, by the Christians, the Jews, the young girls, Aisha, and when I'm looking at all of this, I'm like, he's just an abusive man, not a moral example to follow. Surah 65 verse 4, allowing children to be married off and be sexually abused is not something I can resonate with. Hence why I literally immediately said, as a sexual abuse survivor, I said, I am not part of this and I left Islam that very time. Thanks to all the YouTubers, Christians like you and David Boyd. Well, Thanks thank you. you. Listen, it's great to see that you have come home. What has changed in your life between when you were a Muslim and now as a Christian? I was not a Christian for nearly six years. I converted to Christianity, what, last year in August. Oh, so this is even, even so as a Christian, yeah. you've only been one year old then? Yeah, less than one year okay, old. Okay, you left six years ago yeah. from Islam. You became a Christian yeah. one year ago. Yeah. What changed and why did you become a Christian and not stay an atheist or an agnostic? I was an agnostic and I believed that, uh, I, didn't, I didn't believe that God exists, but I didn't conform to any religion. But I wanted to bring the uh, perspective that when I read about Jesus more and more and the Christian influencing me, watching me, and I'm conversing with Christians, and that brought me more closer to, closer to Jesus Christ. And so I learning about Jesus, and I accepted him as a Lord. One night in the evening, I just fell, and I accepted him as our Lord and Savior. Okay. Amen. 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 God bless you. So today, one year on, you have accepted him. Yeah. That has now, what does this mean in your life today? It means everything that I come here and I support my brother and sister in Christ. I support all my brothers and sisters over here. We have differences, but the difference is what makes us human beings. I can converse with other Christians with disagreements, but as a Muslim, I could never do that. I see so many different parallels as a Christian now, and when I see Muslims, 
they can they kill each other for the tiny minute disagreements. As Christians, we can openly converse about things. That's the beauty of Christianity. That's the beauty. What about your family back home yes. in Pakistan? Oh, Are so they in problem? Are they going to be difficult? Do they because you've now become a Christian? So my family all, can, uh, my immediate family came to uh, came to England with me. So they all left Islam, but my my relatives and everyone in Pakistan, they have completely cut off all the ties with me. And all of the people that I know there, they have got nothing to do with me. What would happen to them or what would happen to you if you went back to Pakistan and did what you're doing here now? I would be immediately killed as soon as I land on the airport because I've got fatwas on me. So I can be killed immediately as soon as I get on the airport. They will get me off the flight, immediately to the police station and the death. That and is it. Because of what you're saying here or because of what you said in the past? No, because I am a Christian. That's the only thing, because I changed my religion. I left my religion and now I'm in a death penalty. So you're an apostate. Absolutely. You're an apostate. Yes. Well, listen, so good to have you. God Thanks bless. for getting up your first time on the ladder. Absolutely. God bless Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. How are you doing? I do remember you. Yes, I do.